Hi, so this video um, introduces a couple of techniques one can use to um, tell a story about um, you know the activity on a, on a Facebook page. Um, this video introduces in particular um, a simple technique using Excel, how to get uh, a quantitative overview um, and a visualization of the activity uh, that happened on a particular Facebook page. So for example here, the page of uh, the European uh, Parliament. Um, it also introduces a technique, it's also quite simple, uh, how to make uh, screenshots of um, individual posts uh, in order, you know, either to uh, do qualitative analysis um, having the material a little bit more accessible than actually kind of clicking through the pages or for um, creating a movie that uses the screenshots to uh, narrate the, you know, the kind of the highlights of, you know, maybe some activity over time. Um, so what's very important to know about um, um, Facebook pages is uh, they're quite interesting for historical analysis because um, compared to uh, Twitter, for example, well, in general, you can really access uh, all the data starting from the first post uh, on, uh, on the page. Um, and also compared to um, doing web historic research, for example, with the Wayback Machine, there are some advantages uh, because uh, the data quality in general is uh, much higher. Um, so, you know, normally you can really uh, access uh, all, uh, all posts and, you know, mostly also all... Uh, or comments, but also, of course, uh, you know the the uh, the speed uh, with which um, Facebook uh, replies to requests is also much higher, right? Which makes it uh, a little bit uh, less cumbersome than um, than uh, the Wayback Machine, for example. So um, the basis of what we're going to do is um, uh, a tool that is a very simple uh, data extractor for uh, for Facebook. It's called uh, NetViz. And um, in order to extract data for a particular page, we have to uh, to like it. So I've I've, I've done that already. And um, if I move then uh, on to uh, the NetViz application, right, which you can find by simply typing NetViz into the uh, search bar. Um, uh, well, I I arrive here at the at the basic uh, interface, and here I've got a, a bunch of modules to choose. I'm gonna um, choose a page data. And here normally you have the list of all of the pages you have uh, liked, right? So I recommend for this kind of uh, uh, research to use um, a, um, a research account. You know, if you if you don't want your uh, friends to see what uh, what you're liking for uh, for research, um, yeah. So you basically have this uh, list uh, of uh, of pages you liked, and there are two main options uh, that need to be taken into account. First. Uh, there are two ways of selecting uh, the data you want to retrieve, the posts, right? Um, you can either simply get the last, you know, n posts um, starting from, uh, well, or up to the present day, or you can kind of specify a, a date range. Um, so, you know, according to your question, um, this, um, you know, uh, may, you know, either, either one of the two options may be, uh, a better fit. What's of course important is that um, you know this can become just very very big, right? So be a little bit careful um, when it comes to downloading posts. In some cases, you know this may be a very 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 large number of um, uh, uh, posts and, and comments and so forth. Um, so in those cases, it may be interesting to you know simply run in batches, for example. Uh, but in general, you know, the very, very big pa uh, Facebook pages are either going to fail or just take a very, very long time to uh, to retrieve. Um, so I really recommend, you know, uh, choosing something that is maybe not that heavy. Uh, that's the first element, kind of the data uh, chooser. And um, the second element is um, the question, you know, do you take into account posts that were only posted by the page uh, administrators or uh, posts by both pages and users. So um, it's up to the uh, administrators of the page to, to, to actually allow users to post on the page, right? So users can always comment and they can like on posts, but whether they can post themselves 
is up for the administrator to decide. So a lot of pages only allow posts by, um, by the pages themselves. Um, yeah, so in this case here we have uh, our European Parliament and I've already uh, started uh, the process, right? So on the, on the right here we have the, the uh, results. Um, yeah, we've retrieved uh, 50 posts. Um, and, uh, uh, well, there were uh, about uh, 36,000 um, individuals um, uh, commenting on, um, on this, uh, commenting or liking, being active on, uh, on this page, only on 50 posts, right? So this is already kind of a pretty big page. Um, and, well, you know, that took uh, about uh, maybe three minutes to, to get, so that, that's, that's still okay. But uh, again, kind of um, be patient and or prudent uh, when, uh, you know, interacting with big pages. So in the end, we got a zip archive that contains a folder called, uh, called data. And I'm um, just going to, you know, uh, look at that. Um, I've already unpacked it here. And the folder contains uh, three files. The first one is uh, the, the, the comments um, that... Um, yeah, that really is uh, uh, the biggest file here. Uh, there is one, it's a tabular file, right? So like an Excel file. There is a, a one row for every comment. And if we look back here, we can see, you know, that people have uh, commented uh, uh, 63,000 uh, times, right? So, so there is about, well, 63,000 comments. In, uh, in that file. The second file is a, is a network file. I'm not going to go into that now. Um, and the third file is really actually the most simple one. Um, it's a file that um, allows you uh, or it gives you simply a, uh, a list of the posts and, um, you know, when they were posted, uh, you know, what type they are and so forth. So um, with much further ado, Without much further ado, um, let's just open this one. So it's a tabular file. That means you don't have to import it into Excel. Excel can uh, directly open it uh, uh, like this. And, um, well, you can see there's a bunch of columns here, um, right? So it starts off with a type. So every post is um, one of these types, right? Video, photo, uh, link, um, or um, I think there's also a like a status update. Uh, so there's a bunch of different types. Um, then very often there is a message. Now there may be picture link and so forth. For us, it's not so interesting. What's actually most interesting for us is here, um, um, the column that's called uh, post publish SQL. Because here the goal is uh, in this video, right, to give a, 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 an overview uh, over, you know, um, uh, the activity on that page. So uh, uh, over time, right? So that the time is really very important. And there are actually three time formats in there uh, that hopefully help um, accommodate different, uh, different programs, right? So uh, different um, uh, data programs may, um, uh, you know, be not so good at handling a, a certain format. So I've got different formats in there. And, and uh, Excel is pretty good at handling this format. So um, this column is kind of really interesting for us. And then, uh, well, there's a, a bunch of, you know, quantitative columns. So, uh, you know, so for example, this post has been posted at this, uh, this date, has been, you know, liked so many times. Um, and engagement basically just combines uh, likes um, comments, uh, shares, and likes on comments into one metric. And we're just going to use this one. If you want to do more fine-grained analysis, right, you have those values, um, and you can, you know, uh, project the data a, a bit uh, differently. Interesting also for us a bit later on is going to be the, the column post link, which basically contains, well, a link to uh, each individual post. So um, we're going to use that uh, later on. But first, um, we're simply going to try to get a little bit of an overview, a temporal overview um, of uh, the data inside of that file. Um, right, so I'm by no means uh, uh, an Excel uh, expert. Uh, so, um, you know, bear with me. Uh, I normally use R for data analysis, but that, that requires... Uh, um, you know, programming, uh, uh, programming skills. Uh, so for this, this one, we're going to use uh, Excel. Um, very often, if you have this kind of, you know, you could call it kind of, you know, case-based data or kind of 
kind of case organized data, meaning that every row um, contains, you know, a, uh, a single incident, uh, a single, um, you know, for example, user, or in this case, a single post. Uh, we can use uh, a very powerful feature uh, in uh, in Excel that's called um, uh, the pivot table to um, you know boil that data down uh, to make it analyzable. So we're actually just gonna you know create a new pivot pivot table here in data. Um, yeah, it asks us you know the range which data to take into account, and yeah, we're gonna put it into a new worksheet. So just click OK. And then we get this uh, pretty nice, actually, um, uh, pivot table builder where we can uh, play around a little bit uh, in order to analyze data differently. So my goal is going to be to combine um, in, in kind of one table um, the publishing date, the, the type of post, and the engagement value, and to prepare the data in a way that it's easy to, uh, to visualize. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to take here post published SQL right remember that's the data format that uh, Excel is um, uh, you know familiar with and I'm just going to drag that into here I'm going to say okay that's that's you know let's use that as rows um, uh, yeah and then I'm going to use uh, the type for column. Right, so we're going to have a columns of link, photo, video. In this file, there's only a three uh, types. Sometimes it can be more. Um, and then I am going to use the engagement count here as values. So it has automatically um, created here sum of engagement. Right? One could, you know, just you know, count occurrences, for example, or um, you know averages so there's there's already at this level just changing the way um, you know it fills in those values in my table really allows me to do all kinds of uh, analysis but let's just uh, run through through one of those um, one of the things that you can see is that here uh, the um, the dates are still the individual post dates right so that's not great for visu uh, for a visualization and analysis um, so what we're going to do is we're going to group uh, these posts by you know some some date element. So uh, it, well, it automatically um, um, selects the full date range uh, available, and I'd, I'd say we start uh, with uh, with days, right? So what's going to happen is if we group it like this, bam, we're just going to get the um, uh, the uh, you know uh, individual individual dates and it will you know uh, perform uh, uh, the calculations automatically in in the background so so that's uh, that's nice um, well the first thing that we're seeing already here right is that our 50 posts um, really don't cover that long of a time span right it's about 15 days um, so we can see it's quite an active um, quite an active uh, page right and we already see also that the total of um, of um, you know either likes or comments uh, Per, per day. But we could, for example, instead of saying, you know, we're interested in distributing this along those uh, differences here, you know, link, photo, video, um, we could, for example, make a pivot table uh, that takes into account the likes and the comments uh, rather than, uh, uh, you know, just engagement uh, and the type. So it's really a, a quite interesting thing to, to play with. So um, what I want to do now is simply saying, okay, right, that's the data. I'm going to leave the, the total out for, for the moment um, because I actually don't need it because I, I, I want to propose to make um, a stacked uh, bar chart as a um, kind of a way to get an overview here. Um, yeah, it's called stacked column chart. Let's just open that. And here you can already see, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, uh, how Excel here kind of uh, interprets, um, you know, and fuses the different, uh, the three uh, data series into um, a single uh, uh, bar per, per date, right? So I can see, for example, that, uh, well, on the, on the 23rd of, uh, of October, um, we've had, uh, uh, you know, so many, uh, so many uh, users either liking and engaging posts, uh, and those were all uh, photos, right? Um, yes, uh, we can also look at, um, uh, you know, kind of here we see 
Uh, I've got a video that you know didn't re receive that many likes, but very very importantly, right? The 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 days where kind of most activity um, occurred uh, was uh, uh, apparently around uh, around videos. Um, so this is one way of looking at it. Um, we can then, you know, we could do now other things. We could, for example, group it differently in terms of date, right? So for example, um, I'm going to delete that one again. I can say, you know, group, uh, let's, you know, ungroup it first, group it again. So let's group it per month, for example, right? Uh, and here we only have two months, right? But if your date range is much larger, it may simply not be a, a good way to um, to group here. Um, we could also, you know, do different kinds of, uh, instead of counting uh, engagement points, we could, for example, just say, you know, let's just count, let's just do a pure count here um, and then group per day again. Well, this way we get a little bit of an overview over the posting activity, right? So this is much more the um, now account of how active the page has been. And here we can simply use exactly the same kind of chart again, stack column, uh, and here we get really, uh, you know, the activity of the page um, per per day, right? So uh, this is really a, a way of, um, you know, analyzing uh, you know, getting kind of this macro overview over what happened over time. Um, you can also kind of choose here different layouts. I, I find that kind of adding those um, uh, smaller, those kind of lines, uh, um, yeah, really add to, to uh, uh, readability. Um, all right, so uh, this is uh, really a way of, um, uh, you know, creating this kind of macro overview, and just uh, just uh, really, really quickly, uh, I think maybe the most important one is indeed you know uh, the sum here uh, of engagement uh, per per day, or again, if your if your uh, date range is much larger, you know, per per month, or you can also actually create uh, your own groups, right? So um, if I go here and I ungroup again. And then group. You can, for example, you know, say per day, but then take, you know, for example, you know, groups of seven days. And then, well, in this case, we get three groups because, um, well, that's the time. Um, uh, that's, you know, the underlying uh, uh, data is only 15 days. So um, we get three groups. But this is really a way of kind of, you know, wiggling around a little bit. A lot of this, this kind of work um, has to do with, uh, you know, finding the scales, finding the units. Um, very often we have, um, we have, you know, pages. I mean, some pages can just be really big, very active, others really small, uh, very inactive. So, so you have to find, you know, kind of the right, the right uh, uh, scale here, but kind of very important. The only thing you have to do to get to this kind of a stacked, stacked view is, is mark those elements and um, uh, choose the uh, stacked, uh, column here. Um, interestingly, right here, we can see it has changed things a little bit. So we have the dates actually um, as elements of the bars and here those uh, types as unit, we can uh, change that very easily by just switching here row and column, right? So yeah, um, there's a, a lot of different things uh, you can do. Um, all right, so just to recapitulate, uh, what we did was simply get the data file um, open, you know, the basic uh, overview file. This one here, um, start a, a pivot table, um, you know, select the units we're interested in, create this kind of, uh, you know, overview table, and then uh, visualize that, right? So, so this could give us, you know, for a, a page, kind of a great overview over, you know, what has the page been posting and what has been the engagement, right? And this can, for example, be used as an overlay in a movie if you want to narrate it that way, or um, you know, can also just be used as a, a, a chart for a, for a, for a paper. Um, all right. So this was the first thing that I I wanted to uh, to show you. The second thing is um, uh, again uh, something that's very interesting for um, 
for a movie, um, you know, if you want to have, if you want to narrate the story uh, of a particular Facebook page, um, it's it's great to just have, you know, every single post as a as a screenshot, right? If you if you scroll around a page, especially a, a, a big one, things get very clunky, and your your video is just not going to look good. Um, your browser is going to be slowed down. So um, uh, one way of um, yeah, you know, avoiding that is simply saying, you know, let's make a screenshot of every single post. And this is why um, NetVis creates those uh, uh, links here in the very last column for uh, every um, individual post. So this looks then a little bit like, uh, let's open a new tab here. Looks like this, right? So you get really the post. Um, all right, I don't want to have a video playing. Uh, you will get really the post and then, you know, the comments uh, below it. And this way, you know, you get the text, you get an image when it's there, you get some some basic stats, right? And you can really use that uh, pretty nicely. So in order to make those um, uh, screenshots, we're going to use uh, a Firefox extension called uh, Grab Them All. Um, so that's here. Uh, and uh, what Grab Them All needs as an input is simply a list of URLs, right? They need to um, start with HTTP, but that's the case here anyway. So I'm just going to copy those, all of those URLs. Um, I've already prepared a, a, a file here that I called links.txt. I'm going to copy that in there. And then very nice, I have, you know, just a list of, uh, of um, uh, URLs. So what I can do then is uh, go back to Firefox, start grab them all. And here there are basically two sets of parameters. First of all, uh, we have uh, here, you know, the opportunity to load our file, the one we just prepared. Then we can set a destination directory. Uh, where do we want the screenshots to be stored? And then we have those time limits um, that we don't have to put all that high, right? So compared with the Wayback Machine that is, you know, often very slow. Uh, I know Facebook has, uh, well, obviously very big server farms uh, that, are, that are optimized for speed. So um, um, I've opted here for, you know, wait 20 seconds for it to load the page and then, you know, five seconds for it to ex uh, execute the JavaScript. But that's already, you know, quite, um, you know, quite generous. So in many cases, it, it would, you know, it could go even lower. So let's just uh, open that file. Aha, only one record found. So there seems to be a problem here, right? So let's go back to our file. And open it. Well, it looks good from here. Why didn't it find, you know, more entries than one? So that is a very common problem, right? So we're, we're in, a, in a realm where, um, um, you know, a lot of software is not, you know, for millions and millions of users, but, um, you know, very specialized, small budget software. So in this case, grab them all. It's not good at detecting uh, the line breaks here between those URLs. So what we have to do is we have to convert them. That's very often a, a, a problem, particularly on Mac, right? On PC, you will have much fewer of those uh, problems. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to open this file with um, another text editor called Sublime Text, which uh, is, uh, you know, a really, really good uh, text editor. Really good, right? So in my view, actually, probably the best one on, or you know, one of the best on the market. Um, you can use it for free. And um, here... In the view uh, menu element, you have here, oh, line endings. Oh, 